Welcome guys to another new episode today. First and foremost, I hope you've been having a lovely week. So today we have our special guest, actually our normal guest who always comes, yeah, your favorite counselor. We have Lorna here with us today. And she's going to be taking us to a very interesting topic. As you guys can remember, there was one time we did about anxiety. Today we're going to look about the difference between panic attacks and anxiety. Because sometimes you might have a panic attack, think it's anxiety, and it's not. So, welcome, Lorna, to our, get, to our show today. I'm glad to have you here once again. Actually, our viewers love you so much. So, yes, I think actually you should be my co-host because they love seeing you here. <laughs> All right, so you can start us off with telling us what's the difference between a panic attack and anxiety. Um, one must understand that there's a difference, yeah? For panic attack, it is sudden. It's something that just comes out of the blues, you know? Like, it's like a gunshot almost, yeah? So a, a panic attack is, is basically a sudden fear or anxiety that has physical symptoms. Those physical symptoms are heart palpitations. Sometimes you feel like you're going crazy. You feel, uh, you know, really, really agitated. You're not able even to know where you are, the surrounding that you are. And these physical symptoms or this sudden fear or anxiety is because of a perceived threat. Perceived means it's not, it's not really threatening, but it's perceived and not really a danger, an imminent danger. So for panic attacks, it, it's, it's sudden. It's sudden and intense and very quick. While anxiety is something that takes a very long time, you know? By the time you get anxious, for example, when you get an anxiety attack due to an exam, it's something that has built up over time. Maybe you've been studying, so tomorrow night is the day, you're not able to sleep tonight. And then again, tomorrow in the morning, you're not able to wake up, you're so an anxious. But for a panic attack, it comes so sudden. Most times, it doesn't even have a specific trigger that comes. It comes without a trigger. So that's the main difference between a panic attack and an anxiety attack. So, um, so which one is more dangerous rather? Is it panic attack or anxiety? So for anxiety, it's normal. Uh, an anxiety attack is something normal, but it could go into an anxiety disorder. Because there's a difference between an attack and a disorder. By the time it reaches a disorder, means you've even gone maybe through um, a hospital checkup, a physical exam, where you've been told, okay, now you have a disorder, you need to take medication. But uh, for panic attack, it's the most dangerous because most often than not, you're not sure, you're not, you don't know. But at least with anxiety, you can tell, you can say, oh, okay, it seems I'm getting to become anxious. There's something that's making me very anxious. What can I do about it? But panic attack is very sudden. It could take even less than 10 minutes, even a minute of a panic attack, and you wonder, okay, what just happened? Because you're not, you're not even in this world. So it's very dangerous, but also anxiety attack is also dangerous because it could lead to an anxiety disorder. So to my next question, does having a, a panic attack means you have anxiety? Okay, it's good to understand that uh, with a panic attack, as I said, it's a sudden fear of anxiety. It could come through anxiety, but it doesn't have a trigger. So it could come without the anxiety. It's on its own. A panic attack is something on its own. But there are those anxious feelings that you feel. Maybe you feel like, especially in the mental state now, you feel like I'm going to die. This is the end of me. It's like uh, now I'm going crazy. Some people even feel like, you know, you're going to you're going to a complete uh, sort of uh, craziness, maybe of some sort. So it has anxiety symptoms, but it's not does not mean that once you have a panic at attack, you're anxious. It could be other things that could lead about. Even certain medication cause panic attacks. There's also smoking or bang that also causes panic attack. So it doesn't necessarily mean that when you have, you have a panic attack, you're anxious because it could come without a trigger. So just a quick one, you've talked about like when smoking weed, like that's like a panic attack. So in other words, panic attack in slang, it means tripping. Like I hear, we hear people saying, hey, you're tripping. Like, uh, the, like for example, the some people who smoke weed have had scenarios or cases whereby someone says, hey, myself, I started seeing things like I started uh, tensing, like tensing. So will you say panic attack, it's like tripping the way like, you know, uh, the drug uh, weed makes some people like start feeling some type of way. Remember, it's very sudden. And what, okay, what normally happens in a panic attack? Let me give you a scenario here. Yeah? So what happens is that you, 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 basically it's like a perceived threat comes, yeah? And once that threat comes, your body, 
uh, immediately triggers a flight or fight response. Now, what is a flight or fight response? That is where the body feels like it's either I flee or I fight back. Yeah. So most often they're not because of that. The adrenaline now goes up. And that is when now you cause, because now the adrenaline is up and you're not able to calm yourself down, what normally happens now it causes the, 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 now the symptoms of a panic attack. That means you're not able to move, you feel like your heart is beating very fast, you feel like your chest is pounding, you feel irritable, maybe you're shaking, maybe you're sweating, maybe it depends also on human beings. You might even find uh, at some point the person is dazed off, you're trying to call them miles, miles, and they're not there. Because at that specific point, a very intense uh, fear has come into their body. A, ten, a very intense kind of anxiety that has physical symptoms comes into the body and triggers a response. So yes, it could be something like that, but you know for, for weed and for smoking and for drinking, there is also something else that comes in because of the alcohol intake and also because of the substances that are used, especially in smoking and other maybe substances like Mira, Cut and all that. So that could also be another kind of attack that because substance abuse disorder also has other symptoms that may come. Maybe you feel like you're not in this world, you're high, you're all that. So it could be that that is because of a panic attack, but it could also be not a panic attack. It would be because of the substance or because of the alcohol. But smoking is also a cause of a panic attack. Yeah. So when it comes to still on panic attacks, uh, how long does a panic attack last? in a way so that some, one can differentiate between an anxiety and a panic attack and also um, does a panic attack also comes uh, without like like it just comes because i think anxiety is like a routine like it's, it's a routine yeah so does a panic attack can come maybe today and then in the next few weeks it doesn't and then again so can you tell us how long does a panic attack last Okay, so through, uh, of course, uh, many research that have been done, it, 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 it varies, of course, it varies from person to person. So a panic attack may take between 20 minutes to 30 minutes. But the peak, the peak of that panic attack usually is between 10 minutes to 12 minutes, where now, that is where now the heart is pounding, everything is trying to, I think you've ever seen someone who is going through an epileptic attack, you know what happens to them. It's something like that, it's something close to that. But now with panic attack, it could take even 30 minutes. The difference between an anxiety attack and a panic attack, again, is the time, the time spent in both of them. For anxiety, it could lead over time. Maybe I'm anxious today, tomorrow I'm more anxious, then I get more anxious, then now I start to calm down. But a panic attack is sudden, it comes. So it's between 20 to 30 minutes, but the peak of that, the onset or the point where you realize, oh, it seems my friend is getting a panic attack, is between 10 to 12 minutes. Yeah. So uh, let's look at a scenario whereby, okay, let's say for example, me, let's say maybe um, I'm somewhere, like just relax with friends and all that. And then, oh, let's say just I'm just alone. And then all of a sudden, I get a panic attack. How can I? calm myself from getting a panic attack and also let's say for example if people are around you or let's say for example I am with a, a friends and then one of them gets a panic attack and maybe does not know how to control it so how can I as an individual help myself come from a panic attack and also I as a friend how can I help someone who's experiencing a panic attack That's right, because panic attack one thing you must understand the first step is to understand that I'm having a panic attack yeah and to relabel that thought. You know, most times when you get a panic attack, it's a feeling as if you're going to die, yeah? And you feel like the world is coming to an end. So you first have to relabel your thought. Relabeling means you've already labeled, maybe you say that I'm going to die, I'm finished, I'll never live again, my life is over. So relabel that thought and say, I'm having a panic attack, I just need to calm down. It's only for a few minutes and then I'll get back to normal. So the first step is to understand, I'm having a panic attack. The understanding, the knowledge, the acceptance that yes, I'm having a panic attack, before even knowing why I've gotten a panic attack or what has triggered the panic attack, or what exactly is happening to the body and what, what response is coming up and how can I also get through. So the first step is to relabel the thought, then do something, you know, don't just stand there. Especially if you're seated, stand up straight because once you're, you're straight, the uh, adrenaline turns to also calm down and it will help to calm the panic attack. So stand, stand up straight, then get physically active. Uh, there is usually the 3 to 3, 3 3 3 rule. The first three is name three things you can see. You can see I see, I see a building, I see a tree, I see a, a, a microphone, I see whatever it is. You name three things. Then you name three things you can hear. Maybe I can say I hear music, I hear someone singing, 
I hear a doorbell or something, then you move three parts of your body. Why do we do this? Because it helps you to understand that I'm still here, you know, so that you can get off that panic attack. Three things you can see, it is to enable to see is your eyesight working. Because when you get a panic attack, it tends to feel like you're, there's a bit of, you know, you're not sure what is happening and it kind of looks blurry. Yeah? I don't know whether uh, um, you've ever felt a point where you're, you're, you're a bit dizzy, maybe because of a medication or something is happening. You kind of feel like you're seeing things in threes. Yeah? So that three, those three things you see can help in your eyesight. Then three things you hear helps you to also understand that, ah, so I can hear something, I'm, I'm here, you know, I'm in this world, so that you don't feel like you're dying. And then the three things, moving in three parts of your body helps you to get active, to stay physically active. Then another one is immediately uh, you, you feel like you're having a panic attack. Um, try and also reach out to someone. If you're near someone, just uh, alert someone that it seems I'm not okay. Most times you're not able to talk, but alert someone. They'll be able to sense that something is not right. That I maybe could answer even the question of what if you find that someone is having a panic attack? You help them to do that. You can even tell them, tell me three things you see. Tell me three things you hear. Tell me, move three parts of your body. And don't just move any normal part of your body. Try and move the really hard ones, like the ankle, something that is more physical yeah, than the rest. Then um, try and get some support immediately and as much as possible with panic attacks. Once you've calmed down and once that specific uh, it has, uh, opportunity has now, you know you're okay, now get to understand what was happening so that you don't repeat a panic attack. Because sadly a panic attack, more panic attacks leads to panic disorder. And there are three ways you will know you have a panic disorder which uh, psychiatrists will evaluate you. One, if you have subsequent maybe panic attacks. Two, if you have, if you, you're always fearing, you have the consequences of fear, you're like, eh, it seems like this panic attack, I might die from this panic attack. Then the third one, it's not from a specific medication or it's not from a specific illness, so they will, again, look down into those three. If you have those three uh, major symptoms, then they will might uh, do a physical exam, do some mental tests to just ascertain that it's not just a panic attack, but now you get into a panic disorder, which of course, panic disorder is another whole other uh, spectrum and that one, that one is more wide yeah but immediately you feel you have a panic attack try and understand what is happening if possible write down immediately after you get the panic attack understand okay today what happened is there something that I've been thinking about for a very long period of time is there something that's stressing me up is there something that is on my mind so that you can try and now do more of a mental health checkup because more often than not a panic attack may, may be due to a mental a stress or trauma or something that is happening in your body that you're not able to understand so just ensure you calm down at that point but the most important thing is to relabel that thought just tell yourself that i'm okay i'm fine do something don't just stand there and be like okay i'm having a panic attack i'm dying try and do something pick up a, a something try and reach out to someone try and talk so that at least you can be able to open up and see exactly what is happening at that specific moment so it applies also with uh, like are trying to help someone with a panic attack. Exactly. Ah, okay. You've actually reminded me of something. You've said pick up something. There was one time I saw in social media someone holding ice. Is it also a way? But that one is with anxiety. But can it work with panic attack? Panic attack, you know, at that point, uh, it's sudden. Huh? You know, for anxiety, you, yeah, you can tell I'm getting anxious. But because of panic attack, is, it's very sudden. Most often than not, you can't even <laughs> think straight at that point. So, yeah, it could help, but... Uh, you, you know, we always say management of anything is different from person to person. For me, maybe uh, the three to three rule will not even work. Maybe I might not even be able to say three things that I see. But maybe just standing up straight and being able to move could help. Maybe for you, the ice could help. Because remember, you also don't want to trigger something else. Because that ice is very cool. So you might also trigger another response that is now different. And it might even cause other reactions that may not be good even for your system. Yeah, so just be careful with whatever you're using. Just use the normal things. Stand up, uh, walk a bit, try and get active a bit, physical active, you know. And if possible, once you understand I am going through panic attacks, be physically active. Try and exercise a lot. Exercise helps because of the hormones that are re uh, released and it helps just to feel better. Yeah. One more last one, uh, still on, the, on how to control the panic attack. We see in movies whereby maybe like an actor takes a brown paper and then starts breathing in and out. Is that also a form of controlling panic attacks, the breathing in, the deep breathing in and out? That one is very important, yes. Breathing techniques. Remember at that point what is happening, 
your heart, heart is palpitating and then there is your chest is pounding. So most often than not, you're not breathing like the normal heart rate. Actually, most times they say when you check someone's heart rate when they're having a panic attack, it's very high. Yeah. So it's good to breathe in. Yes, there are those techniques. There are those for people who breathe in a paper bag. That one is extremely effective. But there's also the breathing technique. What is the breathing technique? The breathing technique is not what we used to do while we were in PE, in primary school. But the breathing technique is something that is taken in quick succession. Yeah. I mean, slowly, sorry. So it's not the one we used to do. Breathe in, out. That one is, there's no breathing you've done there. Yeah. So with the breathing, with the breathing technique, what happens, you have to first close your eyes. Maybe look for something that you feel is very calm for you. Most people talk of music, others talk of water, others talk of the birds singing, others talk of maybe nature. Others talk of, you know, singing somewhere. So you close your eyes and think of something, your calm place. What is your calming place? And this doesn't only work for panic attacks. It could also happen for any other, you know, any other problem that you might have and you're feeling very anxious, yeah? So you're breathing as you're uh, uh, relaxing and as you're closing your eyes, you count to three silently in your mind, breathing in in three or even to five and then breathing out in five, yeah? At that panic attack, you might not reach five because remember your heart is really pounding. So if you can just take even if it's a very deep inside breath, that is means that it's from the inside, not really something that you're just doing just to show that I'm breathing in and out so that even the heart can also relax. Because once you trigger or um, attack some of the symptoms, it can help to also calm down the, uh, the panic attack. So yes, breathing into a bag could also help because remember what is happening there, you're trying to enlarge your heart muscles so that they can also contract and relax. So I think it's it's important. It's important that you breathe and you ensure that your breathing is fine even before getting physically active because it could also cause, you know, because at that point you feel like you're having a heart attack. So you really need to control that even before you control other things. You must be breathing. Yeah. So um, since you've been talking about how to control uh, panic attack, we haven't even looked at uh, some of the causes of uh, panic attacks. So uh, you can even take us through like some of the, what causes panic attack, you see. So far, like you've said about maybe drugs like uh, weed, so you can give us more we can, so that we can see. So the first uh, uh, cause of a panic attack is genetics. It, it, uh, as you all know, uh, that uh, most conditions causes are genetics it comes from your genes if maybe your family is prone to having panic attacks you are more higher you have a higher chance of getting a panic attack does not necessarily mean once your mother maybe gets panic attacks you will automatically get a panic attack it's the same thing with cancer it's the same thing with diabetes sometimes your family history has diabetes you end up not getting diabetes so it's that one is a genetic factor a predisposing factor then number two is uh, family stress or something that is stressing you up it could be family stress or just stress in general maybe something that has been stressing you up for a very long time period of time and that stress you're not able to manage it so for example maybe a workplace stress maybe home stress marriage stress financial stress something that's just coming and you're feeling i am overwhelmed so what happens the body now tends to react remember a panic attack comes sudden it's just something that comes at the click of a button it's more of like a bomb you know if a bomb was to be or a gunshot was to be fired here it's something we are not expecting yeah so it's something that comes from that another thing is um again trauma maybe if you've gone through some sort of trauma maybe especially sexual assault uh, sexual harassment maybe rape or uh, uh, defilement for young kids or sodomy or something that has happened to you while you were young something traumatic maybe a death of somebody it could also trigger that panic attack now remember that most of these causes could be because of something that happened a while back but it happens today it could be a, a traumatic experience that you went through while you were young but today, what happens, it just comes suddenly, yeah? So you really need to understand what exactly is causing my panic attack. Especially if it's the first time you're having a panic attack, it's good to try and, you know, jot down whatever is happening in your body and what you feel. Maybe I've been stressed up uh, late, maybe I've been uh, going through a very huge, you know, development in my family. Sometimes it could be even uh, the birth of a baby, a new development could also cause a panic attack, especially new mothers tend to make may be prone to panic attacks because you've just gotten your, mother, your child, you, do, you don't understand how am I going to take care of this child, you know, I've just been given a child, maybe it's just been handed to you in the hospital and you think, wow, I'm, 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 I'm complete. Then again, as you've talked about, smoking um, or other substances or even alcohol abuse may also cause some panic attacks and uh, also, it's good to understand that with smoking and uh, alcohol use, 
because of that substance that is there, it may cause you to have, especially if you're going through maybe a period of you've not taken for a while, it could also cause a panic attack because the body is wondering what happened to the substance that you've gotten me used to taking. So what happens is you may be prone or you may get a panic attack at that moment. Yeah, so those are some of the causes that may cause panic attacks. Um, what of environmental uh, uh, triggers, for example, you see right now we have uh, COVID-19 with us here. Yeah. Can it also like cause uh, panic attacks for someone to suffer from panic attacks? Yes, it could because uh, we also need to remember that uh, this is a very this is something traumatic, you know, people don't understand what you need to do. Remember, there's also the uncertainty where you're not sure what exactly is happening. Tomorrow will I wake up and, you know, our president locks down the country or I lose my job, I'm told by there there's no job. Or will I wake up and be told that my partner or my friend or my colleague who I've been in with at work has COVID. So now you're back to isolation, 14 days in a room without having to see your family, without having to... Of course, this can cause a panic attack because remember, it's something that is... We, it's not normal. We have not gotten used to it, you know, and it's not something that we have been prepared for. You know, most things we are prepared for. We are prepared maybe to get some stress at work. We are prepared, but we are never prepared for something, a, a, a disease or an illness that just comes and takes over the country, takes over the economy, takes over so many aspects of our lives. So yes, it could cause environmental things, maybe even where you find that maybe a change in a family setup. Maybe you used to live in a specific place, but now because of resources, you have to move to another place. It may cause a panic attack because you know your body is not really understanding what exactly is happening so it might cause that sudden fear or anxiety that may come with some physical symptoms yeah. last question um, since you've talked about the natural remedies one can do to uh, control the panic attacks is there treatment for panic attacks out there like for example in the hospitals yeah, you can take us through that also so of course yes there's uh, some natural remedies that are there very important nat natural remedies and the first one, you must understand that a panic attack may need medication, especially if it is prolonged. There are those who have panic attacks and it goes away and, you know, you're good. But if it is something that is prolonged, maybe after one week I get a panic attack, after two weeks I get a panic attack. Actually, I was talking to a pastor on uh, Sunday, this Sunday that has just passed, and he was telling me about a certain man who was, has been going through depression for a while and suicidal ideation. And he was coming to church just to, you know, worship with the rest of the other, you know, people and... On his way, he got a panic attack in the car and he realized this is a panic attack. So what did he immediately do? He called the pastor and said, I'm having a panic attack. I can't come. I've just, I'm stuck. I'm here exactly at, you know, he could, he was able to name that I'm here next to maybe Clean Shelf Supermarket or next to, you know, Magunas. And he was able to state that. So the pastor arranged for someone to go and pick him up immediately. Yeah. So you see, for him, it's something that has been prolonged. It's something day to day, day to day. So of course, he has to take medication. Usually there are medications that are called C, I mean, S. SRI, serotonin selective reactive inhibitors. Those are um, basically they are anti-anxiety medications and also antidepressant and anti-anxiety because a panic attack may also drive you into depression or maybe a cause of depression. Yeah. So there are medications that you're given. Byron is majorly given in hospitals using psychiatrists or other medical doctors. There's also therapy. Um, Therapy is very important. Talk therapy, just going and talking about it and maybe saying I'm very stressed about uh, the death of my loved one or I'm stressed about my workplace environment. I was the breadwinner. Now I've lost my job due to COVID and I'm not able to move. You know, that's a reality that is coming out right now. Then there's also, once you go through counseling and medication, those two have to go together. Yeah, You can't do medication without therapy and you can't do therapy. If you have that uh, the prolonged uh, panic attacks, you can't have therapy without medication. So they go hand in hand. But there are other things. There are other natural remedies like diet, um, just changing your diet, ensuring there's not too much sugar, especially because sugar may also trigger panic attacks, especially if you're prone to panic attacks. Exercise, sleeping well, and understanding that when you're having panic attacks, you, your schedule has to be, you know, exact. If it's sleeping at 8, today you can't sleep at 8, then tomorrow you sleep at 2. What happens? Your body is confused, especially if you're trying to get back from, to, to get up from a panic attack. You, then they sleep, there's exercise, there's feeding well, there's, you know, ensuring that you get support. There are support groups of people who go through panic disorders or panic attacks just to ensure that they can be able even to talk about the experience. Because in therapy, what happens? We help you to relieve that experience. We ask you exactly, explain to us what you felt before the panic attack, during the panic attack, and after the panic attack, so that we can trigger 
the emotions that came out from there and trigger exactly what were you feeling. Did you feel like you were going to die? Did you feel it was the end of the earth? Did you feel some sort of low mood or just feeling anxious or, you know, just feeling, ah, I can't take this anymore. So we try to help you to do that. So that support group, that uh, support group is very important because, you know, you're there with many people who have gone through panic attacks and they help you to you know, go through that journey. But you must understand that panic attack is not the end of life. It's just something sudden, you know, and you could get out of it without even getting to a panic disorder. So it's treatable and you can get better. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us in this uh, talk today about uh, panic attacks and anxiety. I think our viewers have understood the difference between both of them. And actually, I think I might even also invite you for the following week about we talk about uh, managing home stress and uh, and anxiety because I think one way or another we also have some situations that happen to us when we are at home and we don't know how to control them. But I'm so glad that you came and I'm sure our viewers have understood uh, what you've talked about and as always our viewers love the the vibrant Donna joining us <laughs> in our segment always and for first and foremost because you're young you're like like you're like you're a youth for us so I think they are they are able to correlate with you in this kind of in these talks that you always have here so thanks so much and from our viewers also we we are thankful for you for joining us to our viewers out there remember to like and subscribe and share our videos because only you you can make these uh, videos help someone out there because my my network is not the same with yours so we never know who's going through panic attacks and anxiety till next time guys have a wonderful day thank you that was nice <laughs>